Hello and welcome to Fridge Cat. If you eat food, then Thanks, this mate. is the show for you. Oh, this is definitely the show for me. In the fridge today, we level up your scrambled eggs. And Baz, what? Get your coat. We're going home with two chefs. But first, Biggie versus Tupac, Clinton versus Trump, Ali versus Frazier. All massive battles in their own right, but nothing compares, nothing compares <laughs> to Ebers versus Curry. I first met Ben in culinary school. I first met James, a little rugged Scottish guy. He was a few years above me, but he was uh, struggling a little bit, so I was helping him out. Came knocking at the door looking for a, a chance, and I wouldn't say it's charity, but we gave him one. I basically come up with all the recipes that Ben takes credit for. James, he's come in, he's kind of helped support in my role, and actually, I guess you could call him sous chef. He'd agree with that. What? Who is the better chef? Me. I mean, we could argue about this until the Cote de Bouffe comes home, but actually there's probably only one way to settle it. We've got to have an ultimate chef battle. What a day we have for you today, ladies and gentlemen. Two culinary juggernauts go head to head to prove themselves in the ultimate battle. Right, gentlemen, I want nothing but a fair, square fight. You will have 90 minutes to create what is, in your opinion, the ultimate chefy dish. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Too many cooks will spoil the broth. Whoever first spills the milk will cry. Let's get it on! This may not look like it, but this is a Cote de Beurre smoked bone marrow mash. Drawing isn't really my forte, cooking is, and that's why I'm going to win this battle. I'm going to start by tossing some potatoes in oil, salt and pepper and baking them. I'm going for familiarity, the kind of food people want to eat. Chicken, chips and slaw with a twist. It's going to be a quail, which we know is fiddly, but I'm going to get rid of the bones, I'm going to solve that problem. A healthy Asian pear slaw, lotus crisps. I'm going to start with the stuffing for the quail, that shallot, garlic, ginger, sweat it off in a pan to go nice and sweet before adding in smoky bacon good crispy. Barry Taylor with me, I'm Michael Huddlestone. Barry, how are you feeling today? Um, I'm excited, to mm. say the least. Um, I'm looking forward to see what these two have to offer. Okay, I have just peeled some potatoes, put them on to boil. That is for my crispy roast potatoes. They're going to be super crispy because I'm going to mash them as they're in the oven as they're cooking. It is amazing. Other flavours going to my sausage meat stuffing is going to be some dried figs, but I've macerated them in sake. So a fermented rice wine, Japanese style, and chives. So I made some beef stock last night and I'm just reducing it down so it's a really sticky jus. Now I'm going to move on to my mushroom puree. Shiitake mushrooms, chestnut mushrooms, porcini mushrooms, shallot, garlic and double cream. And a little bit of sambal, just to add a little bit of spice. Sambal! Wasn't he in the line from Michael? Either that Barry or it's a Southeast Asian hot sauce. I mean if you were to see his dish on a menu, would you choose it? I just don't think you necessarily have to go and buy the most expensive cut of meat to impress for a chef battle. You can get a quail, £1.50 a pop, right. then do something with it. But that's just a little chicken, isn't it? It's a Japanese quail. So first of all, the neck of the bird, get rid of that. Secondly, wings. If you're not a chef, maybe don't try this at home. Or get your butcher to do it. And the crowd goes wild. This is my bone marrow. Um, I'm going to roast this for 15, 20 minutes until all the fat runs out and it's kind of like jelly. And then that's going to go through my mash. Sounds great. If you take your time on it, this is what you're left with. A bird with a bag of skin, but the only two bones are the legs. And inside of the bag, we stuff our meat. Did he just call it a bag? It's a bird bag. Um, this is actually one of the most disgusting things I've ever filmed in my life. Well, wow, it's such a high level of detail. James just seems to be making beef and tatties. I don't really like what he's doing. It looks a bit... grim. <laughs> <laughs> the stock that I'm making to make my sauce is going to have all the bone from quails plus regular mirepoix. I haven't got time to cook a stock without the pressure, so brown off that a little bit. Add in some wine, a bit of water, whack on the lid and cook under pressure for about 15 minutes. Now you've promised me this isn't a bedroom toy. It's not, it's a kitchen toy. Okay, good. Vibrates quite a lot though, doesn't it? James going for the smoked milk there, Michael. There's a fine line between smoky deliciousness and an ashtray, so he'll have to watch himself here. Oh, my pressure cooker's about to explode. Always keep an eye on your pressure cooker. Okay, so I've scooped out my baked potatoes, put them in a pan with butter, milk, bone marrow, and now I'm adding my smoked milk. 
Ben, £1.50 a quail emperor, unsheathing his £300 chef's knife here. I'm not making potato chips, I'm making lotus root crisps. This has been peeled, it's now going to be boiled in miso stock. Later on, we'll slice it into thin slices and deep fry to make them crispy, at which point we'll toss them in seaweed salt. Quail's eggs, room temperature, going into boiling water, 90 seconds. Are you counting, James? Ooh, I would have gradually let those in with a spoon or something. I think every single one of those characters they went in. He's probably going to use some stumped eggs. Can we get a close-up? I'm almost surprised at how well it's going, but not surprised because I'm great. I've got my little baby quail's eggs. I've peeled them. They're now going to go into seasoned flour, seasoned egg, and our panko breadcrumbs, which I'm adding Japanese seven spice. How are you going to cook that? Because it's thick. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it in the pan. And because it's thick, it will never really overcook. So I'm going to put it on a medium heat with butter. Get lots of caramelization, because I can cook it for like 10 minutes in the pan. 10 minutes in the oven. Done. Pressure, release. Oh! <laughs> it's just science. So in total, how much do you reckon this dish has cost you? This cut of beef was around £20. You really don't want to be getting that wrong, do you? And no, you do not want to get this wrong. £1.50 a quail. Beef. <laughs> My stock has reduced. Now I'm going to add in three flavours. Miso, honey and soy to season it. So I'm going to make my slaw from peeled carrot, cucumber, daikon and pear. Plus I'm making a dressing from yuzu juice, sesame oil and rice wine vinegar. What matters is the precision. Some great techers there. Absolutely blinding techers. <laughs> there is one minute remaining. One minute. Welcome to the new bar area. While those guys plate up, we thought we'd get super nerdy in a new feature we like to call Level Up, and today we're talking scrambled eggs. Level Up is all about taking some really basic dishes and with a few tips and tricks that are really easy to apply, we take them up to the next level because the three of us aren't chefs, we're normal. First thing, chuck some butter in a pan and heat it up until it's nice and foamy. Boom. Handful of spring onions go in and we're just going to heat those up that was the first twist that's going to transform these. Second, cracking eggs into a bowl first, whisking them up. This is what's going to give your scrambled eggs a lovely texture and a great, rich, deep colour. Use a spatula to combine your eggs and once it starts coating the bottom, bring the pan off the heat. Stir it, combine all the eggs, get it back on the heat and repeat. Once you've got a lovely, lumpy, creamy mixture, you want to throw in a tablespoon of creme fraiche to stop the cooking process. And now's the time to add in a pinch of salt and pepper. Got a toaster down there. Oh, that's where you wow. are. Serve on some toast, and if you fancy it, throw in some sriracha. And there you go, that is my way of levelling up scrambled eggs. Cool, see what you think. I'm just gonna go straight for the eggs. Mmm. 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 It tastes cleaner. It's like fresh air and it needs that spice. I've got to be honest, mate, I got slightly distracted by my beer halfway through your recipe. Where can I get the full recipe for this? You can find the whole of this recipe on sortedfood.com. Fair to say scrambled eggs levelled up? So we've dumbed it down. Is it now time to go back to the chefs and then yeah. pick it up again? <laughs> yeah. Good idea. Yeah. That. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Gentlemen, step away from the counter, step away from your plates. That is it, you can do nothing more. It must be time to bring on the sexy. Chefs, it's come to that time, the pressure is now building because it's time to critique your dishes. You've done very well so far, you both kept calm, annoyingly calm, but yeah. Ben, do you want to go first? So I'm going to carve the quail. So the beauty of this is it looks like a whole bird, but you carve through. That sausage meat filling is something else, okay. Now, in contrast, 
visually. It jumps off the plate, it's jumping out of the plate at you. I can't fault the mash whatsoever. And same with the, um, the puree. That is so meaty for such a stupid little bird. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, we need to make a decision. You're either going to pick up a Team Curry t shirt or an Ever Squad t shirt. The good news is there's three of us, so one way or another, we're going to get a majority. We've decided. You can turn around now. No! Hey! Sounds weird, but I feel like I tasted the technique in Ben's. James, I feel at times you may have gone a little bit overboard. Oh. Ooh, that's, that's, that's okay. okay. Just say, say, just say, just say, just say, I went, I went <laughs> ultimate. It feels quite sad that we had to have a loser, but the loser was James. Um, if you disagree with our choice, then you can comment below, give us abuse. But also, we put a poll on YouTube so you can vote for yourself. I think that was a very good Chef Ultimate Battle, and I think that maybe there should be some more in the future. Ooh. How have we got this far and not mentioned the fact this is a brand new show? Because we've been doing the brand new show rather than talking about the brand oh, new okay. show. Well, if you like episode one of the new Fridge Cam show, then let us know by giving us a like. Also, comment down below and let us know what you thought. Uh, if you've got any cooking questions or grade A banter for us, write them down below. Uh, we read all of your comments and we reply to as many as we can. And it goes without saying, but I am going to say it anyway, subscribe. Because if you subscribe to us, then we will make you hungry. Well, that Fridge Cam had everything. It had uh, actually a fake referee's outfit. Yeah, it's actually quite convincing. Is it? Uh, it also had one of the nicest and kindest battles of all time. It was really lovely, wasn't yeah. it? And a brand new show, of course. And a brand new show. We'll see you on Wednesday as we do three things with apples. And it's not what you think. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Oh, hey, this is our aftertaste. Hey, we've done it. Firstly, first show, show done. done. done a show. We've done a show. <laughs> you was robbed. <laughs> Stay, sorry, mate. You, you, were, you were robbed. I'm very sorry. sorry. It was very, very close. So, how, um, how deep into your homes do we go? Well, we went to decide these details, ask questions. Oh, no. All I can say is, I showed the contents of my top drawer. Oh, surely nobody wants to see that. <laughs> <laughs>